So let me then tell you, I think I've talked about some of the modern tweaks already. Uh, let's see. OK, I'll just uh, show them to you. And um, there's one thing that I haven't recapped, but I mentioned it last time. These generations of quarks, this is a kind of an oversimplification. Because um, kind of distinction of something as up and down quark, it's according to the strong interaction. And, but, and the distinction of up and down quarks according to the weak interaction, they are not the same distinction. It's like having two different axes. They are rotated to each other. So uh, I think the new poster might indicate that. So this is the new, newest version of that poster. Um, it doesn't say, OK, it doesn't say skewed generations. But really, um, what these are are um, um, quark flavors according to the strong interaction. And quark, oops. Uh, quark interaction according to quark flavors according to weak interaction are different, and that difference is expressed in an angular parameter. So those are additional parameters, and um, you will see some of the things have changed. These used to be called uh, electron, muon, and tau neutrino. Now they don't. They call it lightest neutrino, little neutrino, and heaviest neutrino. And I think it's uh, kind of explained here. So neutrinos, I'll just read it out loud, are produced in the sun, blah, 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 many other processes. Any produced neutrino can be described as one of the three flavor states, weak flavor states, electron, muon, or tau, labeled by type of the charged electron associated with its production. Each is a defined quantum um, mixture of three definite mass neutrinos. So a way of saying is this. These are the weak interaction eigenstates, but they are not the energy eigenstates of neutrino. These are the actual energy eigenstates of neutrino, for which currently a lot of mass ranges are shown on the table, and further exploration, blah, blah, blah. The backstory here is, if you, for those of you who want to look it up on your own, look up something called solar neutrino problem. It's a problem that was only settled around the early 2000s. And what it, uh, the succinct description of that is, so these are produced in nuclear in reactions. Um, our astrophysicists feel like they understand solar reaction well enough. So they uh, estimate how many neutrinos from the sun we should detect. And when we build a detector and actually detect the neutrinos, for, with what we, everything we know about them, we detect only a third as many neutrinos as we are to detect. And the solution to that is something called neutrino oscillation. That neutrino, neutrinos that are originally produced as electron neutrino on the journey from sun to us, actually more from the core of the sun to the surface of the sun, turns into different flavors of neutrino. The detectors we have, originally they were only built to, to detect the electron neutrino. So, um, so that's, that accounts for the missing two thirds. If uh, those electron neutrinos turned into these two other types of neutrino. Um, so, uh, and a way to make that mechanism work is to say neutrinos actually have mass. And can, there's uh, three different masses. And these are, yeah. So. That's true. I guess I'm almost, I am out of time. So neutrino, that's one modern tweak. In fact, that's the latest change to the um, standard model. And this is kind of an easy tweak. This almost actually matches up the, uh, the skewed generations I was describing in the quark sector. So it kind of makes sense that lepton sector also has skewed generations. So um, I, I don't think a lot of people are troubled by that. Uh, they still don't show the, uh, yeah, we still don't show the, the C of quark anti quark pairs, but that's fine. So, this is produced after the Higgs boson was discovered. So, it now has the measured mass and it has the confirmed spin. It was, you know, in theory, it has to be spin zero. Now we know it to be spin zero from their measurements. Um, I guess that's uh, kind of it. That's uh, the biggest. Uh, um, Thing. And I'm out of time to actually tell you why standard model cannot be the final theory. Um, <laughs> what's the best way to tell you in one minute? Um, 
I think the best way to tell you in one minute is this phrase. You can search this on your own. So this is not something I will ever test you on. Search for physics beyond the standard model. It's an entire field of research. And the reason this is estimate field of research is because every estimate physicist thinks the standard model cannot be the final theory. And if you want to look at the listing of what's wrong with the standard model, you can look at, uh, I guess, prob well, this is the first thing, problems with the standard model. And I will just tell you that uh, uh, this is the one that um, I thought most people found uh, most convincing. And really, this is the most unattractive thing about the standard model. That for a theory, fundamental theory of elementary interactions, it is like a two, three dozen parameters. Well, OK, one and a half dozen parameters. And it's, when you have so many parameters, you can fit anything to match the observations. So a lot of people are uncomfortable with it. That's really why, at least that ought to be why there were people working on string theory, which has its own issues. It has more parameters than standard model. But so 